Hello, welcome. Uh, today we want to talk about the chi-square test of independence. Uh, the problem at hand to explore this problem is this one here. It involves favorite way to eat ice cream and gender. So we will look at how to solve this problem manually and how to solve it with the SPSS software. So the chi-square test is basically to determine whether two variables are independent or dependent. Um, as you see here, we have two categories of gender, five categories of favorite way to eat ice cream. We will... So basically the data they're giving us here, they're giving us observed values. Those are the ones outside of the parentheses. And the ones in the parentheses are expected values. So just a reminder, this problem was originally presented to us here. It was just presented with the observed data. The expected values were calculated using this formula. And as you see in this formula, each expected value, we take sum of the rows for that value times the sum of the columns that we divide by the sample size. The first index indicates the row, the second index indicates the column. Hence, we can verify that these are correct using this formula. So these are the expected values that go in their respective cells in the table. So these formulas, these numbers rather, these expected values are placed in this table right underneath the observed values. Now when conducting this test, the null and alternative hypothesis will be the same in every test. The null will be that the two variables are independent. The alternative will be that they are dependent. Here we were asked at the alpha equals 0 0.01, can you conclude that the variables favor way to eat ice cream and gender are related? So if they're related, that means they are dependent. So our claim is the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis would be that they're independent, which means they are not related. So moving along, we can get the degrees of freedom. We can subtract one from the rows, one from the columns, and take the product. So in this table, we had two rows, five columns. So it's two minus one, five minus one. The product of those differences will be four. So we have four degrees of freedom. With four degrees of freedom and alpha 0 0.01, we get a critical value of chi-squared to be 13.277. Now that value of chi-squared is our critical value. And this type of test is always a right tail test. So the area alpha is to the right of this 13.277 value of chi-squared. And this region, the shaded region, if we land in there, it will be the, the region in which we reject the null hypothesis. If we land to the left of this critical value in the unshaded region, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis and proceed from there. Now, since they had the observed and expected values in this table, The table can be filled in as such, and the chi-square tested statistic will be calculated using this formula. 
which will basically boil down to taking the sum of this last column in the table. When we, we do that, we get 2.067. This value of chi squared is greater than the critical value, hence we land in the shaded region. So our decision will be to reject the null hypothesis. And because the alternative hypothesis was the claim, if we reject the null, it's because there is sufficient evidence to support the claim at the 1% level of significance, as they state. So in other words, in this problem, there is enough evidence at the 1% level of significance to conclude that the variables favor waiting in ice cream and gender are dependent. So that is how you do it manually if you were making this table. Now, the question, how would we do it in SPSS? Well, we would still come up with the null and alternative hypothesis the same way. The alternative would be our claim. And our critical value would still be 13.277, as they indicated here. Now let's take a look at the same problem in SPSS. So here's a new data file in SPSS. We will enter the data in this data file. Now remember, we had two categories of gender, five categories of favorite weighted ice cream. So ultimately it will be 10 lines of data or 10 pairings of data between gender observed frequency and gender and expected frequency. So the first column, I'm going to make it the gender variable. There were two genders. So I will just put ones and twos going all the way down. Ones being male, two being female. We can use any numbers we choose, it doesn't matter. So that's for the first variable. Now the second variable, let's make it wasted ice cream. We had five categories. I used ones and two, so let me start with the number three. And if there's five of them, I'll finish with the number seven, however, each number has to be paired with both of these genders. Each number corresponding to category, that is, has to be paired with both of these numbers for gender. So the number three indicates that the cup was the favorite. So this is the pairing between men whose favorite way was to have it in the cup. And this is the pairing between females who decided to have the cup as their favorite. And I will keep going until I finish. So that takes care of ways to eat ice cream and the last one will be the observed frequency. So let me enter the observed frequencies. And these I'm just entering based on the table that we had before. So this one should have been 182. Let me delete this. Okay, now let me label these. This one we said was gender. This one is a nominal variable. 
So, and I want to indicate what the labels one, two meant. So that's it for gender. Gender had two categories, one and two. The second variable was ways to eat ice cream. That's also on the nominal level. And this one, I'll create labels for this. Three indicated that the favorite way to eat ice cream was from a cup. Four indicated that the favorite way to eat ice cream was from a cone. Five indicated favorite way to eat ice cream was in the form of a sundae. And six indicated that the favorite way to eat an ice cream was a sandwich. And seven indicated, I suppose, all other ways to eat ice cream. Okay, so that takes care of this variable, which was ways to eat ice cream. Okay, now again, that's a little too long, so I'm just going to leave it as ways. The third column, or third variable was the observed frequency. So I'll indicate it this way. We're going to have uh, expected frequencies as well for this. So let me put this on scale level. And I will not put labels here. All right, so let's take a look. This is our data table. Now, I'll show you something neat here. What we can do, we can replace these numbers with actual labels of the categories. What we do, we just click on this capital A here. There we go. So now it looks more aesthetically pleasing. Now, one thing we need to do first when we conduct this analysis, we have to weigh the data. We are going to weigh the cases. We are going to weigh the observed frequency. So we will do that. Okay, so SPSS is weighing them. And let's take a look. We will go to Analyze. We will go to Descriptive Statistics, and we're going to go to Cross Tabs. Now, the way our data was presented, we had gender in rows, we had ways in columns. I will stick to that for the sake of this problem. You can reverse it. If you choose to, you'll get the same and observed frequency goes here. Now let's take a look at let's take a look at let's take a look at the cells. We need to mark off expected. We need to let's continue. And what we need, we need to we don't need this actually. What we need, we need the statistics. We need the chi-squared test. And we have other things we can look at. But for this, let's just look at the chi-squared test. So let's see what happens here. So our table is actually here. The expected values were calculated based on 
the formula so we have these on top were the observed values these on the bottom were the expected values this is for males this is for females so it generated the proper contingency table for us and what we want to do we want to go down here you see the Pearson chi-square the chi-square statistic is 20.067 which is what we had when we did the problem by hand without any software so this value again 20.6067 that value for chi-square is greater than the critical value which was 13.277 hence we are in the shaded region we will reject the null hypothesis and since our claim was the alternative hypothesis there is sufficient evidence to support the claim